so i i am always tempted to teach you guys something new and i'm stopping myself right now okay i don't want to teach anything new today i want to check if whatever we learned in the last class has that gone down well has everybody understood it or not or if there is any doubt we'll clarify that before we move on to the next topic or next thing yeah you have a question Yes, we will come to that. So I'm, I'm pretty sure many of you had questions which you guys wanted to solve. If you guys wanted me to solve, so we'll do that. So yeah, Gitesh, you had a question too. Uh, I don't understand like the long algebraic problems, but I understand the short ones. So I would ask you guys to be more specific when you say long algebraic problem. What do you mean by that? Are you talking about the equations, or are you talking about the exponents problem that we were learning in the previous class? The equations. Okay. So that that makes it more specific, right? So I would need to know where you would want me to explain certain things. All right. So we'll do certain equations, and we'll also do certain uh, uh, exponent problem today in the class. We'll not try learning anything new because. Just learning new things and forgetting everything else is not a good thing. Now, there is one more thing that I want to emphasize before we start the class. In these classes, I would want you guys to spend just two minutes to do bit of meditation, meaning to calm yourself down. Everybody calms down, including myself. Meaning that that will get you mentally ready for. what you learn so in the beginning of the class we'll make this a practice okay going forward before the beginning of the class i would want everybody to loosen up their body mind become calm and promise yourself that yes i know everything and i want to learn things that that you don't have to say it loud you have to just tell to yourself i know things i want to learn things and i am smart enough to learn things and in the class we have to be very cognizant of any and every question that anybody is asking we are not here for debate we are not here for discussion my job is to make sure that i am able to explain math to you guys in an easier convenient way simpler way okay so anything that is triggering a discussion think two times ask yourself is this a valid question to ask if not kill it there okay now let's start so everybody will will just practice a 30 second of silence for ourselves okay i'll be quiet everybody will will be quiet you just calm yourself down okay lot of you have moved from middle school to high school elementary school to middle school junior grade to senior grade i know it might be a little little bit overwhelming just calm yourself down 30 seconds okay i'm just taking order Okay. All right. I calm myself down. Now, the questions. The question that I saw you guys struggling with. One was related to exponents with decimals. Yeah. Some of you, be honest to yourself. Okay. Some of you were struggling with dealing with exponents with decimal. Some of you might have faced problem in any simple uh, exponent also, and then some of you. might be struggling with some of the questions related to equations that we have solved in the past so gitesh you talk about equation you tell me which equation just tell me one question with two equations which you want me to solve i will just emphasize on the approach and try solving it step by step and then everybody just follow me i might ask some of you some questions if i ask somebody a question only that person will answer it okay all right gitesh tell me the question uh that i know so that that is not right if now thing is if any of you have any question anything that you want to clarify you had sent me whatsapp message when i was in office right i i was not able to answer you each one of you whoever has some questions that is to be clarified or explained note down in your notebook come prepared in the next class otherwise 
there is no way i can solve things right okay, okay. now now tisha you have some questions with uh, with the exponents and digital uh, decimal right Not really. Okay. Okay. Anybody here in the classroom has had me anything that was not clear? Yeah. Which one? Yes. I'm asking you if you had any question or doubt with the question assignment I have given. No. Yeah. What was the question? Number one, I would not remember. Now, have you noted down that you have not come prepared to answer the question? I will not answer the question. I I want to make sure that there is discipline in the class. If calm down, calm down. I said that was the first thing. Calm down. I'll come to you. You both, okay? If anybody has any question, I want you guys to note down the question. Come prepare the class. When I say if you have a question, you raise hand and say read the question. This is the question I want you to solve for me. Okay. That's the only way we can be effective. Otherwise, trust me, we are putting all the possible attempt to waste it in the rest time. We, you, I come to you. Okay, I'll come to you. I, I, huh? Okay. You need just find out something that is bad here. We do practice in the next class. I'm going to help you some practices, but. Uh, There is no one thing I have on. No. If you can use, I will. I think you record the video, right? You can, you can uh, take notes from there. Okay. What was your question? Number five. You have to read the question for me. Okay. Seven. In the power, in the power of negative one. Okay. Minus eight. In the power of negative. This is one of the questions that we have to solve. Okay, anybody in the on the screen had any question from the assignment that I have given? I'll come to you also. Just give me one minute. Yeah. Anybody on the screen had any question with the assignment that I have given? No, sir. No. Okay. Here. Okay. Yes, Vivan. Um, I had a problem with question number three. Can you read the question for me? Um, it's just that the question is just like asking us basically is that if x can be an if x is an is a non-zero integer, uh huh, and m and m be negative integers, then x to the power of m multiplied by and x to the power of m. Uh, can you can you type that in the chat? I I mean. So that no, I can I can pick it from there. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, yeah, yeah, Siddhar. Sir, I had a question uh, with number eight. It's um, um, like this, the question is um, one divided by ten to the power of zero. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay, this is the 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 easy one, right? One. So, anything to the power zero, anything in the world to the power zero except zero, is one. Be it a number, be it a decimal, be it a fraction, be it a mixed number, be it any stupid thing that you can think of, any number. Even if somebody says k to the power five, k to the power z, to the power zero. Point blank answer one. Yeah. How is the factor of zero anything from one? Yes. 
So that 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 one, I I did not explain you guys in the last class. Now, okay. So let's go step by step. First thing, Siddharth, you said one by ten to the power zero. How much? One. As I said, any number, anything in the world which is not zero to the power zero will be one. Okay. Take that as a as a as a rule of Bible or whatever you believe in. Okay. Okay, anything to power zero? Yeah. Everything. I said minus 3 to the power 0. If this is 0, answer is no. Your yeah. obvious answer will be 1. But how is it that it is 1 minus 0? Huh? I think it is 1 minus 0. What is that? How come I. 18 power 0 is 1. That's what you are wanting to know. I will prove that. Don't ask the question again and again. Okay? Let's. let's 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 come to this. Yeah, Dikshita, you had a question? Yes, sir. Yes, brother. Why do we always get one? Anything power zero is one. Now that is becoming a million dollar question. I have no other option but to solve it. Let's try solving it. Yeah, so, how huh? Why is it one? That's what I'm going to solve. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to prove that somebody gave you guys. A rule saying something to the power zero is one. I'm I'm a victim of that statement. I'm going to prove it for you guys. Okay, yeah. give me five minutes now. So before I come to this one, uh, uh, Thanu, I will solve this. But after I prove anything to the power zero is one. Okay, let me do that quickly. And yeah, somebody raising hand. Yes, Siddharth. Um, sir, I know like how to prove the problem because my dad teach me. Okay, so you know it. So I will teach I, one more time just for everybody else. Okay, so that uh, it it's understood by everybody, and that that will be okay. So x to a power. Okay, so okay. Let's let's stop any parallel discussion now. Let's stop it now. Let me quickly prove anything to the power zero equal to one. This is what I have to prove. I my. Biggest problem is I don't know what this is and why it is zero to power. Anything power zero is one. Now let's look at this. Very simple. Now we have learned. Let's say x. Let's say x, and that x could be anything but zero. Okay, anything but zero. Now I'm saying x to the power zero is one, and I'm I'm taking a guess here. But you know what? I'm not. Anything to the power zero. Can I say zero is found by doing one minus one? Can I? Yeah. Now we have learned in exponents x to the power x to the power a divided by x to the power b. What does it become? X to the power a minus b. Correct? This is what we learned. Now here you see x to the power zero. I can say that as x to the power one minus one. Yeah. That means I can split this as x to the power one divided by x to the power one. That is how it became x to the power one minus one. Correct? Yeah. So that just hold it, brother. Just hold it. Okay. Let me complete this one because if you keep on uh, raising hand, that draws my attention. Just give me five minutes. Okay. Or less than that. So anything to the power zero, I can write this as. This to the power one minus one or two minus two or four minus four, whatever I feel like, yeah. And that relates to this this concept that we have learned that a minus b that means x to the power a divided by x to the power b. Same way, x to the power a minus b. I can write it x to the power a divided by x to the power b. That means x to the power one is x by x to the power x one is x. X by x. What will you get? So eight to the power zero became one. Now you have thousands of options. Okay, you will say find eight to the power zero equal to one. How? I find eight to the zero. I can say as eight to the power one thousand. If you want to waste some time. Okay. That is how you get a zero, right? Thousand minus thousand gets you zero. That means. This formula, x power a divided by x power b, gives you this. Or you can also write this as this. 
equal to x power a divided by x power b. This is what we have learned in exponents. When you are dividing one exponent by another, hold it, hold it. We are not doing debate here. When you are dividing one exponent by another one, what happens? The power gets subtracted from the numerator to denominator. That means I can write this as this divided by this. So you can choose any number: thousand minus thousand, four minus four, two minus two, one minus one, any which way is fine. Just don't do zero minus zero. That doesn't make mean anything. Yeah. Then you end up proving the same thing that you are trying to do. All right. Yes. Now I'll come to you. What is the question? Uh, so, see, this is the problem. This is why I was asking you guys to do meditation. When when we are learning something, only focus on that. Because if I am learning this, if you ask me, will we will we learn ever calculus in our life? The answer is obvious. Yes. If you want to study. So let's let's start go there, sir. Okay, because that that waste time. Let's be mindful of that. Yeah. So we'll come to that. So I'm answering question three again. If everybody in the class has one question each, that that doesn't mean I will solve each and every problem. I'll only solve few types of problem. So that way, when you learn the type, how to solve the different types of problem, you'll apply that and you'll solve by yourself. Okay. Because if I solve one problem for Gitesh, one problem for Bhimavan, one problem for Siddharth, one for Thanu, one for Adi, one for Arav, I'll only be solving different types of problems without any value for you guys. Okay? All right. Who all has raised hand in the class? Siddharth. What was your question? I'm sorry, I didn't understand anything. You did not understand anything. That's a good sign. That means you were trying to understand. Now let's let's do that. What was that we were trying to do? We were trying to find out why anything to the power zero gives me a one. That was our, our objective. Okay? Anything to the power zero gives me a one. Why? How? That's what we are trying to get an answer for. So we were saying, okay, to the power zero. Can I say zero is one minus one? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Now we have learned in the exponents in the previous class. X to the power a divided by x to the power b gives me x to the power a minus b. Correct? This is what you see. X to the power a minus b. Here a and b both are same. One. That means. Okay. I I see Adi also. Hey Adi, how are you? x to the power zero I can write as x to the power one minus one. So now this x power one minus one, x power a minus b. If I explode this further, I can write this as x power one divided by x power one. And that is how it becomes a one. Yeah. Is it is it making sense to anybody here? Uh, Amoga. Are you able to follow? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that were able to follow this time. So very simple. Okay. Anything to the power zero, I can say zero equals something minus same thing, and then that translates into this because we have learned this already. So we are just creating it here, and that is how. Now you are doing tic tac toe, nothing else. X by x will be one. Two by two will be one. Eight by eight will be one. Right? That's what it is. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody, everybody clear? Adi Kalam? Yeah? Clear? Yeah. Okay. So, so pay attention. Don't, don't, clear. don't zone out. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Let's. Let's go to the, the interesting problem that that Thanu uh, uh, wanted me to solve. But you know what? I'm a very bad teacher. I'm not solving it. Why? Because I have not taught this yet. This question was given to you guys before it was taught. Don't worry about it. It, it should not do anything. It is not my pet, but this doesn't hurt. It's okay. Yeah. What was your question? 
So I don't know anything as a question number. I know question is a question. I'll come to that. Let me solve this, then I'll come to that. Okay. One thing at a time is what my brain is capable of. If I try solving two questions at the same time with two hands, I. That's a bad debate. Stop it. All right. So this is what we. Uh, Kadu was asking me to solve, and I'm not solving this in the first go. I'll do something first before I go to this question. Okay. What we have done is we have talked about the exponents. Multiplication and division. We have not talked about adding exponents here. Okay. Uh, can I teach you guys adding exponents first, then come to this? Okay. Let's solve this problem first. This is easy, not a difficult one. Now, let's look at this like a story. Okay. Let me write the question first. And everybody should focus here. Nobody would zone out. Think about calculus, chat GPT, AI, ML. Okay, everybody in the class, focus on what I'm saying right now. Okay, we all have the tendency of zoning out. Don't do that. Here, yeah, listen. Hands down. Hands down. Okay. Now here, let me write the question here first properly. Seven to the power minus one, minus eight to the power minus one, to the power minus one, minus in parentheses three to the power minus one, minus. Four to the power minus one, parenthesis minus one. And why did I do that? I just created some space on the board so that I can write my story. Okay. This is what we are trying to solve. Let's try. See, this is a normal operation. Anybody else in the class who struggled with this problem, or everybody else was fine. Everybody else was fine. Okay. But I'll I'll just still explain it. Maybe you guys have solved it in a certain way. I might teach you something different. So let's see. You have two options that way. Now anything to the power minus one, x to the power minus one is what? What is the value for this? That is something like one by x. That's what we learn. If I have x to the power minus three, what is the value of that? One by x to the power three. Yep. Okay, so this part is clear, right? Now, this is what we have. What we are going to do here? I will start writing my story. We know seven to the power minus one is one by seven. Minus eight to the power minus one is one by eight. To the power minus one. I'm not dealing with too many things together. Okay, I'm just doing one by one. Minus three to the power minus one gives me one by three. And four to the power minus one gives me one by four to the power minus one. Let me find out this value. Then I'll deal with minus one of this. Let me find out the value of this. Then I'll deal with the value of. Why you have to stop in between? Uh, is this the power of the process practice and then off? Yeah. So, so again, this is very simple. Okay, I have. We have these numbers. We are just trying to simplify. Bond mass, pandas, everything aside. We are just saying okay, seven minus one. It doesn't look like a number. Let me simplify it and bring it to a form that is easy for me. Okay, simplify this, bring it to a form that is easy for me. Eight to the power minus one, I cannot deal with it. Okay, one by eight looks much easier to deal with. Yeah, three to the power minus one, confusing. This looks easier. Four to the power minus one, what would I do? This is easier. Yeah. So now I got this into fraction, and as I have told you guys before. Fraction is my best friend. Keep that in mind. If you are dealing with different types of number, like mixed numbers, convert to a fraction. Decimal, convert to a fraction. It becomes easier to deal with. Okay. So the other thing that I have. So this one converted to fraction. Now this is like adding a fraction. Okay. So that you guys know. We'll do the LCM of seven eight. It is fifty six. Seven eight of fifty six into one eight minus eight seven of fifty six seven. Okay. Minus as uh, power minus one and then this one again doing fraction addition. Uh, I'll say what four into three is twelve. Four minus three to the power minus one. This became eight by seven one by fifty six to the power minus one minus. Four minus three, one by twelve, to the power minus one.
Now this is becoming fun. What will this be? 56. It will be 56. It will just flip. So 1 by 56 is minus 1. What will you say? 1 divided by 1 by 56. This is what it is. And then this flip. If this goes up. So same way, this becomes 56. And this becomes 12. The answer is? What is what? Yeah. So, if you look at this whole sum, there was nothing complicated about it. Only thing I did was, I tried simplifying it. So, for you guys also, whenever you come to a problem, any question, okay? I'm not, a, not with exponents, not with any particular type of problem. Any problem that you come across, your first attempt should be to read it and try simplifying it. Hold it. When you simplify it, you will go step by step and you should be able to solve it. Yes. Can you try it? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, Amoga, you have raised your hand. Yeah, tell me. I actually clicked it. Oh, okay, not a problem. Sagnika. Sorry, Richita. I have like an assignment, I have like the fourth question, I have like as a fourth question. Okay. So, fine. Before I go to Dikshita's question, is this part okay? Is this part clear to you all? Adi, don't take the hat off. Okay? Those emojis are a little bit of distraction, so don't do that. Okay? Alright. So, this part is clear, uh, Sandu? So keep in mind, okay, now for the kids who have joined recently, who have not heard a boring speech from me, this is the time for the bad speech. And that's a method. That's a method that I use, that I that I prescribe, that I suggest, which I have myself practiced in my life for learning math, that is called TAN. Where T stands for trust. Always trust yourself that yes, if anybody can solve it, that is me. So keep that trust with you. Then comes read. Read and read and read and read. When you have a question to solve, don't jump on to solving it immediately. Spend few minutes, few seconds to read it enough till you get bored that okay, I know everything about this question. That's what the R is for. Is and analyze. After you have read the question enough, then you start analyzing. Okay, now this is the information I've got. Here are the formulas I know, this is how I will apply it, and this is how you can solve it. So you have created a blueprint for yourself, how you will solve the problem. And then comes N. N stands for Nike, which is just do it, like the, the shoe or the slipper that uh, Arav is wearing right now. Nike. Nike. Nike says just do it. Yeah? Same thing. So, if you keep this formula in mind, trust is something that you will keep with you always. This is what makes you run. And you run always like this. I change plan to run. Read the question again and again. Don't be shy when it comes to reading the question. Because if you are spending time to read the question, that makes the question much easier. Try that. Read the, you have the question that you are trying to solve one or two times. That will make it easy. And then you analyze. Think in your mind how you are going to approach before you start using a pen or pencil for solving it or a laptop yeah and then comes Nike yeah? when you have read it, read it enough when you have analyzed it then nobody is stopping from just doing it so keep this approach in mind you don't have to memorize this you have to just practice it read the question think about it then you do it that's why I have tried putting that in some interesting form I don't know whether it's interesting or boring it could have gotten boring by now for the kids who have heard me so many times but but if you practice it you'll see some benefit with this okay all right so dikshita can i take your question tell me what the question is if x be any integer different from zero and m be positive integer then x power of minus m is equal to okay so x is any number x is a positive integer any number which is a positive integer and 
greater than zero. That's what it's saying. X is any number greater than zero, and n is a positive integer. Is that what you're saying? Or let me read the question. What was the question number number four, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let me read it. Now you'll see me without glasses. Why? My Can glasses I... are not my friend anymore. Can I put the it in the chat, sir? What is that? Can no, I put it in the no, chat? No, I have it on my phone right now. If x be any integer different from zero, and m be any positive integer, then x to the power of m is equal to. Okay, so it says. I'm reading the see. See, I'm applying trans right now. Okay. I am reading the question. If x be any integer different from zero, uh, if x be any integer different from zero, and m be any positive integer, then x to power minus m is equal to. So x is any integer greater than zero. X is integer and greater than zero. Okay, that's fine. And n be any positive integer, so n is also greater than zero. Okay. Then x to the power minus m is equal to x to the power m. This is first option. Second option says. Um, wait, wait, wait. I know what I'm struggling with. I was picking the wrong picture and it was rotating for me. Second option is this is a, this is b, which says x to the power minus x to the power n. Third option says one by x to the power n. And fourth option says minus one by x to the power n. Yeah, that's the question, right? Is it that? The question yes, was saying if x is a positive integer and m is also a positive integer, meaning x is greater than zero and m is greater than zero, then x to the power minus m will be equal to which one of the following? So x to the x is greater than zero and m is greater than zero. That just a just an information for us saying that we are dealing with only positive numbers. We are dealing with only positive numbers. So let's say I have positive number two. And I have another positive number, let's say three. It says x to the power minus m. Meaning, if I have something like this, what happens? This becomes one by two to the power three. This is what we have learned, right? Yes, sir. Did it become a negative number? No. No. So any, if I have two numbers, both are positive, and even if my exponent exponent is negative, that is not translating into a negative number. Okay. So. What that means is both the numbers when I have my value as negative, I will rule them out. These two are not the options anymore. I'm only looking at these two options now. Okay. So see, I'm telling, I'm teaching you guys a technique called elimination technique. When you are dealing with a multiple choice type question, right? There are two ways of solving it. You can solve it and match the answer, or You, without solving it itself, you can you can knock off the ones which are not valid options. Let's say if you have four options and three of them you found that they are not not valid, without solving itself you can solve. And without solving itself you can pick the right answer. Here, what we know is if I have two positive integers, even I have a power with a negative exponent, it is not going to convert into a negative number. This one was giving me a negative number minus one by this minus x to the power m. These are giving negative numbers, so these two options are ruled out. Does it make sense, Pichita and everybody? Are you guys with yes, me? Sir. Yeah. Okay. So, is that your question? You are talking on mute. Is that I don't understand a little. Okay. So there are two two kids here who are not understanding it. So let me repeat. Now, question number four. Okay, I'm reading it for you guys. If I am preaching, I'm practicing also. I say tran. 
just I, I trust myself that I know I can solve math. That's why I'm teaching you guys, right? That's why I'm daring to teach you guys. Read. Read the question again and again. I'm reading the question right now. If x is a positive integer and m is another positive integer, then x to the power minus m equals one of the four. I'm reading the question again. If x is a positive integer and m is also a positive integer, then x to the power minus m equals one of the four. I read the question two times. I'm tired now. I know that I know everything about the question. I'm confident. Now I'm thinking about it. Okay. I have two integers, meaning both are positive, and I'm trying to find out one positive to the power which has a negative power. But when I do this, what happens? My exponent minus, uh, sorry, when I have two numbers, both are positive, and I'm dealing with a negative exponent here, what happens? It becomes a fraction, it comes down. It doesn't convert to a negative number. It just converts to a fraction. Where the denominator, I pay attention here, otherwise you don't understand. You are you're asking questions that you did not understand and you are not paying attention. That will not help. So, I have two positive numbers. I am looking at this. I have two and three. I just picked up these two as an uh, option, as an example. One positive number, second positive number, I am recreating the same scenario. What is happening here? I am getting one by a, a positive number. It is a fraction. It is not a negative number still. So you're switching it so it's easy to find? Hear me out. Just hear me out. I'm saying, I have two positive numbers. Who's raising hand? Uh, okay, okay. In so, yeah. No, I was hearing the deep sound, so I, I was, that was dragging my attention. I have two numbers, both are positive. And I'm asked to find out this value from the four options. Right now I'm doing analysis. I did not want to deal with x and m. I said, okay, fine. Both are positive numbers, meaning greater than zero. Can I pick two and three? I have two small numbers where the calculation will be faster. x is two and m is three. What happens here? It becomes one by this. I'm still not doing the calculation. What? I'm just rating that with what we know. 18 to the power minus something becomes 1 by that number. It doesn't become a negative number. So the options when I have negative values, I'm just ruling them out. So these two cannot be the option. These two cannot be my answer. I'm just eliminating them so that I have a more focused way to look at things. Okay? Now, now let's find out. Now it's saying what s to the power minus m. What does it mean? Oh, I know this. 1 by x power m. This is what it becomes. This is what we have always seen. This is my answer. Here, had y said x and m both are positive numbers because if x is negative or if x value of x is negative, this might convert to a negative number. That, that depending on how many powers it has. So since it says, it makes it very explicit saying both the numbers are positive, apply that and tell me. So that's why I chose 2 and 3 as 2 options to find out what happens. Does it become a negative number or does it remain a positive number? So, so this is the to your point. The, the question that you had, right, and it's for everybody. That it, it gave a question saying x and y two numbers, x and m are two numbers, both are positive x to the power minus m, choose between the options. We already know x to the power minus m will be this. And since x and m both are positive numbers, we use this two to figure out if it, it, it would ever become a negative number. No, so then we do not these two and just pick up this option. You can straight away pick this option, but just, just a doubt, if this is negative, then this could change. Okay, that, that's why I was, I was talking about it. Yes, we won. Um, can, I go, can I go drink some water? You don't have to ask about it. Just, can just go and grab water, okay? It's, it's fine with that, okay? <laughs> because, like, like I never asked you guys before drinking water, right? I just drink. Okay. Who has a question now? Gitesh? Um, can I go to the bathroom? Don't have to ask. Don't, just don't take 15 minutes. Just come back quickly.
Okay. So this this part is this clear, Dikshita? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Everybody understood? Yeah. Yes. And there's one more question that Adik had. You have to read the question for me. Okay. So everybody pay attention. There's a question coming. And trust me, there's nothing new to learn. I can guarantee you because we have learned these concepts. I might ask one of you to tell me or teach me how to solve it. Okay. Okay. Tell me the question. Louder. 3 by the power of 5. Divided by 3 by the power of negative 6. Negative 6. That's what is to be solved? Okay. And you are sure you don't know how to solve it? Sure? Okay. Alright. Yes, it does. You are talking on mute. Sir, can I solve it? Yes, please. So you don't solve it. Now, see, I'm flipping the table. Can you teach me? Let's say I found the student who doesn't know how to solve it. I have just learned exponents a little bit. If you have to teach me, tell me the approach. You tell me how will you how would you want me to approach solving it? For solving this problem. Oh yeah. So like um so first you'll do like this like a fraction like I can barely see it. But like a like a fraction like three three um the three to the power of five is um the numerator and the and the three um the to the power of minus six is um the denominator. Okay, yeah. So how will you go about then, it? Then so then if, if it go if it goes up it's like a it's plus. Okay. So, like, the minus six turns to plus. Okay. So then it's um minus six. So, so you're saying minus that six plus. So this is three minus five, six. and we are you are making this guy travel up. So that is when the power turns from negative to positive, positive to negative. That's what we we are seeing. So minus six becomes plus six. That's what you're saying, right? And yeah. then yeah. So, then after that so, everybody knows. After that everybody knows. Yeah, yeah, Amoga. Let's let's hear Amoga. So, I think did you pay attention to? Okay. Yeah, Boga, tell me. Teach me rather. The, yeah. I can't see the board properly. You can't see the board properly. The marker is still not. Okay. So, okay. So, let me write it one more time. This was the question 3 to the power 5 divided by 3 to the power minus 6. This was to be solved. So, I was asking you guys. Uh, another was trying to take revenge, saying that, okay, I've been teaching you guys enough, now you guys teach me. So I want somebody to teach me how to solve this. Just tell me the approach. Siddharth gave me one approach, which I like. Amoga, Sanvi, Sanvi, you want to teach me? Yes. Um, so, since, since it's dividing exponents um, that have the same base, is the same as subtracting them? Yep. I can Five minus negative six. Uh huh. Be, um, eleven. Right. Okay. So I, yes, no, you, you got it. So I'm I'm not going to the easier part of it. You told me the concept. So Amoga, do you have any other way? I learned two ways of solving it. Uh, Amoga, you have a third way of solving it. No, I just did the way sound. Same way. Okay, so same thing. I'll tell you guys the third way, which is a complicated way. Sometimes you guys like complicated approach. I'll teach you guys that also. Okay, so first approach was this, like what Siddharth said. Say, okay, fine. This, if this goes up, this becomes negative becomes positive or positive becomes negative. So if you make anything travel from top to bottom, bottom to top, the sign changes. Sign becomes inverse. Party becomes negative, negative becomes positive. Here, whatever I have, this is positive. Whatever is there in the denominator, if I make this guy travel upstairs, right, then this negative sign becomes positive sign. Minus 6 becomes plus 6. And then this is easy peasy. 5 plus 6. This is one way. Second approach that Sanvi said, that was also the same thing. 
Say if I have x to the power a divided by x to the power b, it becomes x to the power a minus b. So here we have 3 to the power 5 divided by 3 to the power minus 6. So it becomes 3 to the power 5 minus a minus b. 5 minus a, a minus b. This is my b. My a is 5, my b is minus 6. So when you break the bracket, it becomes plus. So it becomes 3 to the power 5 minus into minus 5 plus 6. Done? Make sense? And there is a third way, which nobody is going to like, but I will still teach you guys. That is this one. I have 3 to the power 5 divided by 3 to the power minus 6. You don't have to learn this. You can unlearn this very quickly. 3 to the power minus 6, I can write this as this. So I have one fraction here, one fraction here. What happens? Flips. It becomes 3 to the power 5 multiplied by 3 to the power 6 divided by 1. So this one flips. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, we won. So, I have a question about a different problem. Yep. We are talking a problem of like, so what if like the question is 3 to the power of negative 3? Let me write it down. 3 to the power negative 3. I promise you I will not solve it. I will tell you the approach, okay? Multiplied <laughs> by. What is that? 3 to the power minus 3, then? It's multiplied by 3 to the power of negative 5. Negative 5. Any guesses here? Anybody? No, Sanvi has taught me once. Let me give chance to... Arav. Okay. Don't give me the answer. I, I hardly care about the answer, so get me the approach. How would you want me to solve it? So basically, you can do one third times one third. Yes, sir. What is that? So we can change it to one, two, three, three by three times five by three. So, simple. Vivan, what will happen here is, what uh, I am saying is, I will convert this into a fraction, convert this into a fraction. So, with 1, 3 to the power 3. 1, 3 to the power 3 five. into 1, 3 to the power 5. As I said, fraction is my best friend. Whenever I have an opportunity to convert something to fraction, I will do it. That makes my job easier. This is one way of doing it. Second way is, like you know, x to the power a into x to the power b becomes x to the power a plus b. That also you can do. A power x power a, x to the power b. So that becomes x to the power a plus b. So minus 3 plus minus 5. It becomes 3 power minus 8. That is exactly what you get here. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. So that, that's fine. I mean I know you guys you guys already know about it. So yeah, yeah, Moga. Uh, I don't really like fractions. I like decimals. Fractions. So. You like decimals more? Okay, yeah. let me let me give you an interesting problem to deal with. Okay, I'll I will not try proving it. I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just trying to give you guys some clue. Okay, something to make. See, I I I literally love situations where one of you will start challenging me. I want you guys to get there, okay? The day when I see you guys challenging me for a right reason, okay? I am going to... Trust me, I am going to bless you guys, okay? Now, Amuga said that you like decimals more. What is that? That is a mistake that you have created. We did not bring a pencil. I don't have one. If I, if I go searching for a pencil now, I will stop teaching everybody for 10 minutes, right? This is not a good thing. Everybody is there on the video, use the video for your life. Now, Amoga, you said that you like decimals more. I'm not challenging you, but okay, I'm just trying to give you some clue. If I say, multiply this by this, 
would you still do it a decimal way or you would want to convert to a fraction and then deal with it? Uh, so we'll do the decimal way. You'll do the decimal way? Yeah, it's easier. Easy. Okay. It's pretty easy. How, uh, how, how it is easy? You just have to accept the... Oh, no, no part of the task, let one person talk. Not everybody has to be smart at the same time. One person at a time. Yeah, Amoga, you complete. You just have to just put them together and then multiply. Okay. And at the end, you just move the decimals along. Okay. Like, if you do... Uh, and yeah. Okay, and how about this? If I make it more interesting by saying this multiplied by... Yes. Yeah, so no, it's just multiplication. Yeah, we'll still kind of keep it because it's okay. kind of easy. So I, I, will, I will not, see again, I, I don't want to discourage you guys from using one method versus another one. Everybody has different way of looking at things, so I, I would not go there. Uh, what, what I was coming to was that you can always choose. I mean, while, while you have all the right to, uh, to disagree with what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is you always have two options. There could be a situation where converting a decimal to a fraction or vice versa might help you solve the problem faster. So you use the scenario or technique which works for in your favor to do things faster, okay? That's where I will leave it, okay? Let, let me not spend time and energy to convince you guys that one method is right or versus the other one because it's a very individual choice so let's, let's not go there yes yes I'm uh, also are we allowed to use calculators in the class in the class no okay uh, I, I don't I don't want you guys to use calculators in fact there's a surprise element for you guys most of you who have not dealt with tables in the class before uh, I will start uh, asking questions to you guys with respect to tables also because this is level 2 all my kids in level 1 they know tables till 12 so obvious expectation from you guys is that I, I would I would want you to guys to you know, become a champion with tables up to 15 at least in next you know, 6 to 8 months and when I say table 3 15 I am talking about 15 7 to 1 0 5 without any second being spent okay it should come naturally like the way I'm speaking English or the way we are talking to each other. We are not putting any effort for talking, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Sorry? Very tall. So, okay, so I know table till 20. I might have missed some of the table. I might miss some of them. And the day when I realize that I'm missing something, I'll go and memorize again. So, again, it's, it's about, you know, uh, learning something and then using it for my benefit okay so coming back to the point i'm saying uh, so we'll we'll start spending some time on the tables also maybe one of the every every saturday we'll spend 10 minutes just to check who knows how much and who has to put some extra effort right okay all right so we'll talk about the tables in the coming classes maybe next week um, and in the meantime, you guys just, just recollect how much you know, which table you know, up to which table you know. And it, it's okay. I mean, if you know table till 6, that's also fine. I've seen kids from 11, 12 grade also who don't know table of 12. That's okay. So it's just about spending those 5, 10 minutes extra per alternate day and, and you'll be there. I mean, just a matter of putting some discipline around it. Okay. So that's all I had for today. I... I'm sure I did not teach you guys anything new. The only attempt that we made was to understand how to approach the... Just hold it. If, if somebody is, is talking, the basic courtesy is let that person complete a sentence. Without a full stop, I'll not talk, right? So just let that happen. I'll come to you. I, I, if you're raising hand, I'll come to you. So uh, the point is, what we did in the class today was, we did not learn anything new. We just went through some of the problems and we tried to approach the problem to solve them. Okay? How, what will be our approach for solving them? And good thing as a takeaway from the class was, you guys were able to take revenge. 
have been teaching you guys all through so far uh, in today's class you guys were able to teach me also something right i asked you okay this is a problem you tell me what will be my approach for solving it and that gives me confidence that yes when i'm teaching you something i'm able to get something in return from you as well which is a very good sign so i would encourage you guys to you know uh, do that more but we'll do, do that in a more controlled way so that uh, when when we learn something uh, i mean we are learning things without wasting much of time yes are you have a question yeah good are um what is that So be louder, but be slower. That will be the effective way to communicate. Yeah, tell me. So it's hard to communicate. What is that? It was like you had negative six, negative one plus five, negative one. Okay, okay. So you were saying that no, I was saying that I did not teach you guys anything, and you are saying that I taught you something. I'll take that as a as a feedback. Happy about it. Thank you so much. Yep. I'm sorry. I don't know. Now I'm not scared. So what I'm saying is, we we just check whatever we have learned. Are we able to apply them? I can go on a super fast pace and teach you guys hundreds of things in next uh, two three months. What is important is what is that you are able to retain. What is that you are able to use? And and that is what we were trying to ensure today. So you, some of you had some questions. We tried solving them. Some of you were able to explain things to me also, and and request to you all would be, when you come to the class, if you have doubt with any question, note it down. That should be in the top of the page that you bring to the class, be it online, be it in person. Okay. If you don't write questions and say, okay, I have some doubt about some question, trust me, I have no magic wand to solve it. Okay. Yep. with that we can end the class today and i can say have a nice weekend have a nice rest of the evening because we are always meeting tomorrow yeah bye bye take care bye sir